Hi again everybody, Dr. P here, and in this lecture video we'll take a look at ways of synthesizing amines. So um, we've already seen uh, some ways of making amines, so let's start with those. I'll list those out. Uh, we've seen so far. Okay, so we know that we can reduce certain nitrogen-containing compounds, such as nitriles and amides. So for example, if we had, let's say, um, our, um, let's do this, let's do RCH2X, and we'll treat that with NaCN, and that gives us RCH2C triple bond N, that gives us our nitrile, and now that we can go ahead and use um, LiAlH4 followed by water, and that will give us now R, CH2, CH2, NH2. We'll get a primary amine. So we can use the uh, cyanide ion as a nucleophile, and we have to have a, a primary alkyl halide. I guess you maybe could do it with a secondary alkyl halide, but essentially you're going to be making uh, an amine that is one carbon longer. Okay, so you know if you notice here, this part came from the original alkyl halide, and <clears throat> this part here actually came from the, the cyanide. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, similarly, we could take an amide and reduce an amide again with LiAlH4 followed by water, and we will get our CH2 and H2. We'll get a primary amine. And we can make our amide from other carboxylic acid derivatives as well. All right, now we also saw a while ago, um, it was chapter 16, we saw the reduction of nitro groups. So let's say we have the following. and we can use aqueous acid and a metal like zinc to go ahead and reduce our nitro group to an aniline. Now, this does lead us into some problems. For example, what if we had the following, um, the following compound? Now, if we try to use zinc and HCl, that's pretty close to the Clemenson reagent. So this is actually a pretty good reducing agent and would probably reduce our carbonyl as well. So one thing that the text does, text does mention is we could do a treatment with SnCl2, so tin, um, tin 2 chloride and H3O plus and then in a second step, NaOH <coughs> to uh, quench deprotonate. And that will actually preserve other reducible, reducible functional groups. So we'll get to keep our aldehyde in this case, but um, it will reduce the, uh, the nitrogen, or the NO2, the nitro, sorry, it will reduce the nitro to the amine. Okay, so, so that's a new, so let me just write that over here, SNCl2 H3O plus 2 NaOH. And these guys will selectively reduce nitro, nitro groups. All right. Okay, 
so what else have we seen? Well, we've actually also seen we can do SN2 reactions on alkyl halides. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. So SN2 reactions. So we could start with, let's say, um, some alkyl halide, uh, primary or secondary alkyl halide. And um, we will have, let's see here, let's do NH3 plus Rx, and we'll do an SN2, and it'll actually initially give us actually the following complex. We'll get an RNH3 plus X minus uh, salt, and then if we treat that with NaOH, let me just write in here SN2, just so you remember what type of reaction that is. We will get our RNH2. So NaOH pulls off one of those protons, X minus floats away, yada yada. So this is our primary amine. Now the thing is, the primary amine is also a good nucleophile. In fact, it's a little bit better nucleophile than ammonia. So now we could get RNH2 plus Rx giving us R2 and H2 plus X minus, circle the charges here, NaOH to get R2 NH, which is a secondary amine, which is an even better nucleophile than the primary amine. <clears throat> you can maybe see where this is heading. So now we've got our R2 NH plus alkyl halide will give us R3 N H plus X minus treat in a second step with NaOH and we will get R3N which is a tertiary amine which is actually also a good nucleophile R3N plus Rx will give us R4N plus X minus and this is our quaternary ammonium salt. Okay, so this is another way to make amines as long as you have, you know, nitrogen, or sorry, um, ammonia to start with, or another amine to start with. So if you want to make a tertiary, tertiary amine, you can start with the secondary amine. So that's another way that you can do that. All right, now there are some better ways to make um, uh, to, to make some types of amines. So, you know, you can imagine one of the problems here is that you start with ammonia and you'll get some of this, but you'll also get some of this, maybe a tiny amount of this and this. Um, in the uh, sample given in the text, um, one bromo octane is used as the alkyl halide. And um, after reacting for a while, 45% of the product is octyl amine 43% is dioctylamine, uh, and then there are trace amounts of trioctylamine and tetraoctylammonium uh, ion. So you get a mix. So um, there are some better ways to do this. Let's take a look at those. So other... Um, Syntheses. So we looked at syntheses we've seen so far. Let's look at some other syntheses. So the first thing we can do, we can do an SN2, but with N3 minus as nucleophile. So we'll use azide as our nucleophile. Um, and what is N3 minus? Well, it's N, double bond N, double bond N, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, negative charge, positive charge in the middle, negative charge there. So we've got these lone pairs at either end of our azide. And those are good nucleophiles. So for example, we could go ahead and let's say do our SN2. 
So let's just do something like, I don't know, R CH2 X. And we'll treat this with NaN3, sodium azide. And that will give us now R CH2 N triple bond, or double bond N, double bond N minus plus there, one lone pair there. And now this can be reduced with lithium aluminum hydride followed by water and it will give us RCH2 NH2 plus N2 gas. So one of the reasons why the azide is so uh, useful in this case is because it will decompose pretty readily once you start reducing it and it'll give up two nitrogens as N2 and you'll get a couple hydrogens um, attacking that, uh, adding to that nitrogen there. In fact, azide itself is somewhat unstable. I believe um, some airbags are actually um, use the decomposition of sodium azide to produce uh, a volume of nitrogen gas rapidly to inflate the airbag. But anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there. But you can see that this allows you more control. So I could use a primary alkyl halide. And we'll say also works on secondary alkyl halides. As long as we can do an SN2. And we don't have to worry about additional nucleophiles adding because our product, we don't get to the product until the very end. After doing a one nucleophilic addition, this guy here won't do anything until we re react it some more to make the amine. And well, now we've got the amine, we've used up all of this. So we can't have, it's not like this case where as we start making the primary amine, some of it could react with more alkyl halide. This is all in one pot together. Here, we've got this step and then a second step. So, um, so it's a, it's a better it's a better way. There's another way as well that I did want to, um, if I can find another piece of paper, there is another way for making primary amines. It's called the Gabriel synthesis. So let's take a look at that. And this only works with primary amines. So, you know, we can use um, our uh, azide as a nucleophile to get primary or secondary. We can do the Gabriel synthesis, which I'm about to talk about, to get primary. Um, if you want a tertiary amine, well, you actually have to do it this way. And it's not that bad because, yes, your tertiary ad amine could add to your um, alkyl halide, but the thing is, this is going to be a salt and would probably be more water soluble. So you could, you know, keep this um, in, uh, this guy would be in the um, uh, organic phase, and this would be the water, the aqueous phase if you're doing, say, an extraction. Um, you could try to do some other stuff where, you know, you take this guy and, um, you know, you, you basically wait to treat it with NaOH until until the very end. Um, there, there are different things that you, you can do, but getting the tertiary amine isn't quite as, as uh, you don't have to worry about it quite as much as trying to stop at a primary or secondary amine using, um, using this SN2 type method. So anyway, so let's look at this Gabriel synthesis. So what is the Gabriel synthesis? Well, it makes use of the following uh, molecule here. And we've got our benzene ring here. This is thalamid. And what we can do here is treat this with KOH. 
I'm just going to abbreviate my um, uh, do my little shortcut there for the benzene. And now we'll get N minus there. And the reason why we can do that is because this negative charge is resin stabilized. It can be delocalized onto the oxygens. Feel free to try drawing your own resonance structure to see what that looks like. You can push the electrons around and you can see that you can actually delocalize the negative charge onto both oxygens. It's kind of like a beta um, diketone where the uh, pKa of the hydrogen, on, uh, hydrogen on the carbon in between the two ketones is low. It's like around nine. I don't know off the top of my head what the um, pKa is of this proton. I'll have to look that up, but it can be pulled off using hydroxide. Then you'll go ahead and use Rx here, where this is a primary alkyl halide. And that will give us now, that's our nucleophile. will give us that. And uh, I know I haven't drawn in the lone pair. Don't, we're not going to worry about that. And then we will treat this with NaOH and water. And uh, essentially what we're doing is we're hydrolyzing. Well, not essentially. We are hydrolyzing this. And so we'll end up with a diacid plus R and H2. So we'll get the diacid, actually the diacetate, or sorry, the di, uh, carboxylate salt, or carboxylate ion, um, and our uh, primary amine. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, there's another method that we can use, and that is um, reductive amination. Um, of aldehydes or ketones. Okay, and what does that look like? Well, in this case, we'll have something like, I don't know, let's do R, um, O, and let's do R prime there. And then if we treat this with NH3, now remember if we treated this with NH3 and dilute acid, we would get an imine. Um, and if we use uh, H2 and nickel um, or NaBH4, use some kind of reducing agent here, we will end up getting now R, boom, boom, R prime, H, NH2. So that's actually a way to get, in this case, a secondary uh, secondary amine. So essentially what happens is the imine is formed, or at least an imine um, intermediate is formed, and then that gets reduced to the amine. Okay. Let's see here. What else? Um, there's a couple of other reactions. And I'll just say C text. And these are the Hoffman rearrangement and the courteous rearrangement. I'm not going to hold you responsible for these, but they're basically ways of taking either an amide or an acyl azide and getting uh, basically driving off CO2 um, and forming an, an amine. Um, but you guys here, I'll just show you here. It's on page uh, 878. And there's, there's some information if you're really interested in the mechanism. But again, I'm not going to hold you responsible for that. So I just wanted to mention these two. So you can look, look those up um, if you want to. All right. 
All right, well, that just about does it for syntheses of amines. Um, we saw some methods that we've already seen, and then we saw some new methods. So uh, file these away in your bag of synthetic tricks, and um, you can use them to help synthesize amines. All right, well, uh, until next time, stay safe out there. Bye now.